Okay, this is chapter seven, which is all about energy. We've heard of the energy crisis, energy conservation. Well, energy is a physics concept. And here's some of the things we'll talk about in this chapter. So we start with work. Work in physics involves a force and a distance. And in particular, it's equal to force times distance. So our equation is W for work equals F times D. F is the force, D is the distance. So two things are always occurring. There's an application of a force on an object, and that thing has to move. So here's a guy, if he's pushing on a wall and the wall doesn't move, then in physics we would say he does zero work. But if he pushes, pushes with force, force F on some crate and it moves a distance D, then the force uh, times the distance is equal to the work. And there's a unit there. Newtons of force times the distance in meters gives uh, newtons times meters. Or you can call that joule. The, the, um, the unit has a special name in physics called a joule. One joule is one newton times meters. Some examples. Uh, here's a, a load which is being lifted. If you lift twice as much weight, then it requires twice as much work. And that's because the force needed to lift twice the load, the same distance, is twice as much. So it needs to do twice as much work. Also, if you have one load and instead of raising it one story, you raise it two stories, that also requires twice as much work. The reasoning here is that the distance is twice as great. Either way, you've doubled the work. Power is a measure of how fast the work is done. The equation for that is simply work done divided by the time interval. The unit of power is a joule per second, named after uh, James Watt, the developer of the steam engine. It's called the watt. One joule per second equals one watt. You may have heard of kilowatts. A kilowatt is just a thousand joules per second, or a thousand watts. And here's a rocket, which does a lot of work in a very short amount of time, so it's a high power rocket. So somebody running up the stairs is using more power than if they climb the stairs slowly. Now, if you have twice the power of an engine, it means it can do twice the work of one engine in the same amount of time. Or it can do the same amount of work of one engine in half the time. So here is a boat that has 600 horsepower, which has, can be converted to watts through one horsepower is 746 watts. This boat is, has, can speed up twice as fast as this boat, which only has 300 horsepower. So, back to energy. Another form of uh, energy is potential energy. Potential energy is stored energy that could do some work. So, there's elastic potential energy, like a stretched bow has some stored energy in it, and it can do work on the arrow, causing it to speed up. A stretched rubber band in a slingshot also has elastic potential energy. There's also a, a form of potential energy called gravitational. This is potential energy due to the fact that something is high off the ground. And so an example is this coffee mug on the top shelf. It has the potential to fall and smash and make a big loud noise. So it has some gravitational potential energy. And there's even an equation for it. It's the mass of the object times g, the acceleration due to gravity, times the height that it is off the ground, mgh, where g is 9.8. Another form of energy is kinetic energy. This is depends on the mass of an object and the square of the speed times a half. So the equation is actually uh, one half times mass times speed squared. So this means if you speed an object up, double its speed, you quadruple the amount of energy it has of its motion. So it turns out there's a work kinetic energy theorem, which is that the kinetic energy of an object is equal to the work that was done on it to speed it up. So an equation uh, form the net force on an object times the distance it goes is equal to one half mv squared. So here's a car, it has some net force on it f, goes the distance d, f times d is going to give you one half mv squared, its final kinetic energy. So there is a law of physics called the law of conservation of energy, which just states that in a closed system, an energy cannot be created or destroyed, it can only be transformed from one form to another. So an example of this diver 
starts off with potential energy 10,000 joules, but he's not moving. As he falls, that 10,000 joules of energy transforms into kinetic. So that by the time he has zero potential energy at the bottom, he has 10,000 joules of kinetic energy. So a machine is a device which multiplies forces or changes the direction of forces. And one of the principles of machines is that they cannot create energy, like a simple machine, but it can transform energy from one form to another, or from one location to another. But it cannot multiply work or energy somehow. Here's a pulley, here's an inclined plane, here's a, a lever. So the principles of a machine are based on the conservation of energy, which is that the work you input is going to be equal to the work that you output. Okay, that's if there's no losses. So if you look at work in terms of force times distance, distance, the input force times the input distance equals the output force times the output distance. And here's an example of a big pulley system. This weak man is pulling with some small force, but he's pulling a whole lot of string some large distance. Meanwhile, this 500 newtons, very heavy mass, is going up some small distance, but it takes a very large force to, to raise it that small distance. And so these are equal. The simplest machine is a lever, which rotates on a point of support called the fulcrum, right there. And it allows a small force over a large distance d to be converted to a large force over a small distance. Again, obeying this rule, Fd input equals Fd output. Uh, a pulley, arranged like this, like a fixed pulley, can change the direction of the force, but not the magnitude of the force. You can also have a movable pulley, which can, can actually change the amount of force. So here you're lifting this load with half the force, but you're pulling it up uh, a smaller distance. If you pull one meter up, the block will move half a meter up, but your output force will be doubled. Efficiency is the percentage or the fraction of the work that's put into a machine that is converted to useful work output. So the ratio here is the useful energy output divided by the total energy input. That's the efficiency. So here we have a locomotive. It's burning up some energy. Some of that energy is being created to waste heat. It comes out in the steam that goes in that you see. And some of it is converted into the kinetic energy, which is actually moving the train. So your efficiency would be this kinetic energy, the useful energy output, divided by how much you're burning. And this is waste. Now you can actually recycle your waste energy. And this was done uh, by Thomas Edison when he first made some power plants in New York. He realized these created a lot of heat and he used this heat in, uh, to heat nearby buildings. But typically these days, power plants are built far away from houses and they just simply waste 30% of their energy into heat, either into the smoke about like the steam or into nearby rivers. So sources of energy, our main source of energy is the sun. And there's lots of ways we can get energy from the sun. One is this water cycle. Sunlight comes down on the earth, uses its energy to evaporate the water, which then falls as rain. Rain flows in rivers and into, into generator turbines, which we can uh, which gives us useful energy, and then that water returns to the to the ocean. Also, uh, the sun doesn't heat every part of the earth equally, so it generates wind, which can generate which can turn turbines. You can also get sunlight to produce electricity directly through photovoltaic cells, like solar energy panels on rooftops, that can uh, make electric energy directly. And it turns out that more energy from the sun hurts, hits the earth in one hour than all the energy consumed by humans in an entire year. So that's a, that's a good source of energy. Now a fuel cell uses hydrogen and oxygen to combine to make water and energy. And this is just the opposite process of when you run electricity through water, um, you can create bubbles of hydrogen and, and oxygen. If you reverse that process, you can create energy that way. There's also nuclear energy. 
which uses uranium or plutonium and again generates heat, usually turns a turbine. Uh, the advantage of nuclear energy is that it doesn't pollute our atmosphere, but the disadvantage is that it creates radio radioactive waste, which if you store it near humans, can be toxic.